to do a good job running this race, church, what are some of the things that we need to do? Write these down. First, we need to get in shape and stay in shape. I ran track in high school. I was quick, but not quick enough. I loved uh, running the sprints. I ran on the 4x100 relay. I usually was the leadoff man because I was pretty quick out of uh, the blocks. But I never really did any better than second place when I ran the sprints. So at the end of my sophomore year, I decided, hey, I'm going to run long distance and see if I can do a little bit better with long distance. And so at the end of my sophomore year, I started training you know, and running three or four miles every day at first. Oh, my word, I hated it. But I got to the point where I loved running long distance. Well, in 1976, before some of you were born, go ahead and say it, you're old, Har. The, the, our nation did this fitness, uh, just big push, and if you did well, you could get these presidential fitness pageants. Did anybody else work on that? Okay, okay, those of us that are a little bit up there, we understand, we see those. And I wanted, <laughs> I wanted one of those fitness badges. But you had to be able to do well in several areas. In strength, you had to be able to do so many push-ups and pull-ups and set-ups. You had to be able to throw the softball a certain distance. I remember for me, because that was tough, because I had to be able to throw it 208 feet. That might not sound like a lot, but for a softball, that's pretty far. You had to be able to uh, jump a long distance, and you had to be able to show uh, your dexterity and quickness. Well, I did a good job uh, in all of those things. Wasn't the best, but I was high enough to win one of these badges. Well, and so the day of uh, the last event came, and it was the long distance race. And I was like, yes, I am ready for this. And they did these, uh, these presidential badges. They did them in October and November. All the rest of the guys were playing football or playing basketball. Basketball was the big sport uh, at the school I went to, but I wasn't any good, so I ran. So I was ready for the big race, and I was excited. The gun went off, and uh, I took off, and I was in the middle of the pack for the first uh, two laps around the track because, you know, uh, when you run with people who haven't um, been doing training, they always take off too fast, don't they? And so uh, coming up on the third uh, lap, everybody else started dropping off, and I was just hitting my stride. And boy, I just began to pass everybody one by one. And I got to the very uh, last lap. There was one guy ahead of me. I'll never forget his name, Jesse Crum. He beat me all the time in sprints. But Jesse had not been practicing for a long distance. And with about 200 yards left, I, that's right, Ray, I got him. And I finished and I won my one and only long distance race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, because when I had to play, when I had to run against other guys who were in shape, I, the best I ever did was second. A lot of times it was third or fourth. But here, here's the point. If you're going to run a race and do your best, you've got to get in shape and you've got to stay in shape. Look at this verse. The Apostle Paul says, So I do not run aimlessly. I'm running this spiritual race with purpose and with focus and with passion. It's something I focus on every day, not just on Sunday. Look at what he says next. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. I'm fighting a real spiritual battle here, not just an imaginary opponent, this race is real, and my adversary is real, so I'm not playing around here. He says, no, I drive. Everybody say drive. I drive. That's strong language, isn't it? He says, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. It sounds like Paul thinks this race that we are running is very 
important. So Paul says two things to us. First, he says, I'm taking charge of my physical body. Paul had some ailments in his physical body. He says, I'm taking charge of my physical body. I'm going to control it and keep it going and moving. I'm going to endure. I'm not going to give up or quit or withdraw from this race. I'm not going to let my physical life hinder my spiritual life. And then, in the same breath, Paul says, I'm also driving myself spiritually. I'm going to run this race until I see his face. I'm going to live in the glory of his grace, to quote a song. I'm not just going to preach the gospel. I'm actually going to live it out. I'm going to drive myself spiritually and take care of myself spiritually. I'm passionate about this race that I'm in. Church, let me ask you this question. How are you driving yourself spiritually? We talked about this last week. If we are going to run this race, we have to run with intentionality. You see, the answer to this question, how am I driving myself spiritually, is really pretty simple. Here it is. I drive myself spiritually by getting in spiritual shape and staying in spiritual shape. Harv, how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Five words, okay? I'm going to make it simple. Worship, fellowship, discipleship, service, and evangelism. My friends, those are God's five purposes for our life, and we drive ourselves spiritually by purposefully engaging in and pursuing God's purposes for our life. If you and I are going to run this race until we see his face, we need to get in shape and stay in shape by living out God's purposes for our life. Can you say amen? Amen. Number two, we also need to run our own race. Let's watch this together. You got to run your race. Everybody has a race to run. The day you are born. That's when your race began. That's when your race started. The day you were born, God took the starter pistol. He held it up to the sky, and you heard a pop. And it's on you to run. Run until your days are out. Run until you don't have any more days left. You're on a guaranteed two dates. The day you were born and the day you die. What you do with the days in between is up to you. God wants you to be the greatest that you can be. Not what everyone else wants you to be. You shouldn't never be anyone else. God wants you to be great. See, last year you got caught. Instead of running your race and keeping your eyes on the prize and focusing straight ahead, you look back. Last year you lost focus. Watching other people run their race. Making sure they didn't catch up to you. Because you look back, it slowed you down. And they ended up surpassing you. But this year, this this is the year you focus on your own race. And nobody nobody else's. Don't look back to see where the enemy is. Or if they're catching up to you. You're already ahead. Just run your race. race. You can't run anyone else's race. Don't worry about what's going on next to you. Don't worry about what's going on in the lane to the left of you. Or the lane to the right of you. Run your race. Your race. race. Everyone has a race to run. Everybody's race is different. different. Everyone's start and finish line is different. Different. That's why God put you in your own lane. lane. You got to run your race. race. The race that was meant for you. you. But when you go into other people's lanes, that's when you get disqualified. disqualified. When you start to worry about what others are doing, that's when you get caught. That's when you get caught. When you start to look back, that's when you slow down. down. And yes, yes, when you're running your race, you will run into that wall. But don't give up. up. But when you run into that wall, it'll feel like you're in the midst of failure. Failure. But failure is not the end. end. Unless you quit and never try again. again. And if you do fail and fall, Fall. God will be right there. Right there there to pick you up. up. Right there to hold you and help you get through. through. Right there to finish the race with you. You can't give up. up. You're at the point where you're almost at the finish line. Give everything you got. Don't quit. You didn't go through all of this just to give up now. now. You've been through too much in your life. 
to quit now. You're almost there. Don't quit. Don't give up. You're almost at the finish line. Give everything you got until you cross the finish line. That's good, isn't it? Read this scripture with me. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Turn to the person next to you and say, your race isn't my race. Say it. So get out of my face. No, I'm kidding. No, don't say that. Don't say that. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. So here we go. Your race isn't my race. Say it. And my race isn't your race. I'm going to run my own race. Paul says, run with endurance and run your own race. Run the race that God has marked out for you. Now, church, let's be honest. Sometimes it is hard to run this race, isn't it? One of the things that messes us up is when we try to be what other people want us to be. Think about your life right now. If you are trying to be what someone else wants you to be, I can tell you from experience, you're not focused on running your own race. You're focused on the person in the lane next to you. My friend, if we are going to win this race, we've got to take our eyes off of people and determine within ourselves to run the race that God has marked out for us individually. Can you say amen? You see, church, God has a race marked out for you. He has a race marked out for me. And when people get in our lanes or we get in someone else's lane, we mess things up. And you know what happens to runners when they get out of their lane? They get disqualified. Now, spiritually speaking, I don't think we get disqualified, but I do believe that we get distracted and we get discouraged. I know from personal experience that if I don't focus on running my own race, the God, the race that God has marked out for me, I falter in this race that I'm running and I can feel like giving up. The same is true for you, isn't it? That's why God instructs us to run the race that he has marked out for us. When we read the faith chapter, we realize that everybody's race is a little bit different. Look at this. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouth of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. We love this aspect of the race, don't we? I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to run this race and I'm going to win. But my friends, here's another aspect of the race that we don't like as much. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. And others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All of these people, whether conquerors or martyrs, all of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that these heroes of the faith were focused on how others were running the race or were they focused on their own race, the race that God had called them to? Here's the point, church. The man or woman who loves Jesus runs the race when they are overthrowing kingdoms and by the same token, the man or woman who loves Jesus also runs the race when they are called to be martyrs for Jesus. My friend, the reason why the great men and women of faith in the Bible ran the race that God had marked out for them is because they had learned a very important lesson. Here it is. We've got to 
fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. He is our focus. He is our finish line. He is our reward. And we are running for him. And here's why we run for all we're worth. And here's why we lay it all on the line for Jesus. Look at this. Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. My friends, this is our motivation for running this race. Church, if we are going to run this race, we need to know this and remember this. Hear me. We endure not because of our own strength, we endure because our hearts and our minds are fixed on Him. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We can run this race and we can run our own race, but it's not in our own strength. We run the race He marked out for us by keeping our eyes and our minds fixed on Jesus. Can you say amen? Number three, when you fall down, get back up and keep running Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. I think we would all agree with this because there are times in our life where you and I just fall flat on our face. My friends, our success in this race has everything to do with how well we continue how successful are we at getting back up and getting back in the race after we have tripped and fallen? God's word would teach us that the great men and women in the Bible didn't feel sorry for themselves when they fell down. They just picked themselves up, brushed themselves off, and started running again. Church, here's why we need to get back up and keep running. Write these points down. First, God isn't finished with me yet. Did you know that? God is not finished with you. We might feel like we are finished, but God isn't finished with us. If you're like me, I'm kind of self-deprecating. When I fall down, I have a tendency to kind of kick myself and hit myself and say, why did you have to be so stupid, Harv? Well, guess what? Let me tell you something. God called me to this race, and he called you to this race knowing how many times that we would fall down, but he still called us. He doesn't expect us to be perfect. He knows that we are a work in progress. Here's a thought that just helped me so much this week. Falling down in God's mind is just a normal part of the race. Falling down in God's mind is just a normal part of this race. He's not surprised when we fall down, but here's what we need to remember, church. Getting back up is optional, right? You know that, that uh, commercial, help, I've fallen and I can't get up? I know a lot of Christians that are like, help, I've fallen and I won't get up, right? You see, getting back up is optional. It's on us. So when we fall, we need to say to ourselves, God knew that I would fall. He loves me even though I fell. So I need to just get back up and get in the race because he isn't finished with me yet. Amen? Two, it's never too late to become more. If you would say to me, well, you just don't know the plans I had for my life, Harv, and none of those things have worked out. You know, I think most of us could say that to some degree. But my friends, I don't think it's ever too late to become more than what we are. And I don't, ever, I don't think it's ever too late to try to be what we might have been had we gotten around to it earlier. Remember, God didn't use Moses until he was 80 years old. There are a lot of examples in the Bible of God using people later on in their lives. There are a lot of examples of God taking people through detours so that he could shape them into what he wanted them to become. You know, sometimes when we fall down, we say, well, Satan won that round. 
But here's the thing, church. Hear me. Our God is an expert at taking what Satan means for our demise and turning it for our good. So when we fall down, we need to say, I'm going to get up and I'm going to develop a never say never attitude and I'm going to keep on running. Third, God always wants to teach us important lessons. The longer I live, the more I realize that my life experiences are really life lessons and nothing, nothing is ever wasted with God. Now let's just be painfully honest about this, okay? Many times when we fall down in the race, it's because we refuse to learn the lesson that God is trying to teach us. Our tendency a lot of times is to repeat the same mistake over and over again. Can I tell you something? There is another option for us. Here it is. If we ask God to give us the wisdom to learn from our mistakes, that attitude can help us and give us the motivation we need to get up and get back in the race. Because God will continue to teach us important lessons the rest of our life. My friends, he wants to turn our failures into successes for his glory and for our good. Church, there are a lot of people who at one time ran this race that we are running. And they ran well for a while, but then they gave up. Here's what Paul says to them. You were running a good race who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth. This is an interesting verse to me because Paul's saying, you were running a good race, who caused you to quit running? Because it doesn't feel like you are running anymore. Church, our job is to just keep on running, and when we fall down, and hear me, or if someone else trips us up, our job is to get back up and keep on running. I want to give you a picture of this. This is one of the greatest comebacks uh, in a 600 meter that I've ever watched. Check this out. This is a 600 meter. Watch this girl, Heather Dornadin. This is the moment that Heather Dornadin brutally slammed into the ground on the last lap of a 600 meter race. She was overtaking from second place when the other runner's foot tripped her. Oh my God. She went down. Completely devastating her chances of winning. Heather had been the favorite to win, but there were only 200 meters left of the race. So it was up to her teammate to bring it home. Heather's teammate used the clash as an opportunity to pull out from last place to the front of the pack. And it looked like she might just be able to get the win. And that's when something absolutely remarkable happened. Heather got up and started chasing down the pack. Dorgan is flying down the back. She is catching up. She is going to catch Von Dorn. meters left and she did that isn't that awesome here's the spiritual analogy if when we fall down we get back up and keep running if we run in such a way as to win my friends God will help us win God will help us win this race but my friends we have to do our part we have to get up when we fall down and we've got to keep on running because God still has lessons he wants us to learn. Can you say amen? If we're going to run this race, my friends, we have to determine to finish the race. Let me just kind of wrap up the series right here. Just like the diligent farmer gets the produce through endurance, just like the soldier who goes the distance and accomplishes his mission through endurance, the runner who finishes the race and wins the prize does it through endurance. Paul describes it like this. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Let me ask you two questions.
questions. Are you running to win this race? And are you running to get the prize, the eternal reward that Jesus has for you? I can tell you what you're thinking right now. Some of you are thinking, Harv, I'm running with everything I'm worth. I'm going for the prize. But some of you, if you're honest, are thinking, you know, Harv, I don't care that much about a prize. I just want to get to heaven. If I can just eke into heaven, I'll be okay. Can I tell you something, church? That idea, that attitude of, yeah, I know I'm in a race, and I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to keep running, but I'm not going to diligently pay the price to win. Can I tell you something? We understand that today, but the Apostle Paul, that idea would have been very, very foreign to him. If he were here today, he would say to us, listen, you're running a race and you better be doing it with every fiber of your being because every true Christian strives to win the race. A half-hearted attempt isn't going to get the job done. That's what Paul is saying right here. He goes on. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. This is really interesting because Paul was writing this to the church in Corinth. Corinth was a, was a city in Greece, and the Greeks enjoyed two great athletic events, the Olympian Games and the Isthmian Games. The Isthmian Games were actually held in Corinth, so the Corinthian believers would have been very familiar with the analogy of running a race. Paul says, these runners who run in the Isthmian games, they do it to win a prize that will fade away. Do you know what the, the winner would win? Do you know what they won? They, in these prestigious games, they received a crown made of dry, wild celery. <laughs> Later, they changed it to a pine wreath crown. Oh, goody, goody. So Paul is saying these runners work hard their whole life to win a crown that is going to dry up and wither away. So he says, in contrast, Christians, we're running this race for an eternal prize. We run this race for a crown that will never perish. The King James calls it an incorruptible crown an imperishable crown, a victor's crown. My friends, let me tell you why we want to win this crown, okay? Let me give us a little motivation here. After Jesus gives us our crown, do you know what we're going to do with the crown that he gives us? We are going to lay it at his feet in the ultimate act of worship. You see, someday in heaven, all the saints and angels, like we sang this morning, all the heavenly hosts and the angels and every believer there will sing, worthy is the Lamb. Jesus, you are worthy of it all. Church, I want to have a crown to lay at his feet. I want to hear him say, well done. <laughs> you see, that, my friends... That is our motivation for running. That's our motivation for running. Not so we can go, oh, look at my crown. It's so that we can say, Jesus. The only reason I'm standing here is because of what you have done for me. And so I lived my life for you. And I am happy to lay down this crown and worship you with every fiber of my being. You see, Paul says this race has eternal implications. So you need to run it with every fiber of your being. Would you read the next eight words with me? So I run with purpose in every step. Church, spiritual growth, hear me, spiritual growth is purposeful. Discipleship is purposeful. 
Becoming who God wants us to be is purposeful. And can I tell you something today? We can't follow everyone else's plan and follow God's plan at the same time. We've got to run our own race. And sometimes following Jesus means taking a more difficult path. Think about this. Olympic runners, they count the cost, don't they? They go to bed at a certain time. They say no to certain foods. They train a certain way. They deny themselves. And guess what? They are purposeful in every decision they make and every step they take. If we are going to run this race, we need to do the same thing. You see, church, there are no shortcuts in this race. The race that God has marked out for us is straight and it's narrow. But my friends, it has been marked out for us. All we have to do is follow the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Think about this. Jesus used his time on earth to bring glory to his Father in heaven. He did not allow himself to get distracted by the things of this world. He ran his race with endurance, and every step that Jesus took was purposeful. He had his eyes fixed on God the Father. That's how he finished the race that God the Father had marked out for Jesus the Son. And church, that's how you and I will finish the race that God has marked out for us. How do we finish this race? How do we finish strong? We fix our eyes on Jesus. And we don't allow ourselves to get distracted by this world or by people. And we make every step we take count. Church, time is short. Jesus is coming soon. We want to run this race until we see, see his face. Amen? Here's how we're going to wrap up. Look at these uh, four statements up here on the screen. And I want you to pray three prayers. I want you to look at these statements and then just pray, Lord, what is it that you want me to hear today? Just pray that and just take a moment to listen. Lord, what is it that you want me to hear today? And then pray, Lord, how would you have me respond? What's that action point? And then pray, Lord, is there someone you would like me to share this with? Next Sunday is Easter, church. Great opportunity to share and invite somebody to church. Ask God, who's that person you want me to share with? Let's pray together. I invite you to pray as I close. Father, help us to live our Christian lives like a disciplined runner. Just these videos are so inspiring. Inspire us to get in shape and stay in shape so that we can run with endurance. Help us to run our own race and not get distracted by other people or this world. And Father, when we fall down, and we will, help us not to beat ourselves up, but instead help us to get up and get back in the race. Help us to keep running no matter what. And Lord Jesus, we ask you to help us fix our eyes on you. You are the one who will help us finish this race. Help us to run to win. Help us to make every step we take count. Help us to run this race until we see you face to face. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said.
God bless you, church. We'll see you next Sunday for Easter.